each Google form has a selection of settings that you can use to customize and optimize your form based on the purpose that you have for that form. Um, I'm going to encourage you to create a blank Google form that you can use to follow along during this video so that you can uh, play with the settings as I explain them. I've got a form opened up here and I'm going to click on the gear or I call it the fidget spinner up in the top right corner next to the send button. The settings tab uh, or page has three different tabs, general, presentation, and quizzes. And I'm going to go through each of them and explain what these settings do and how you might use them in your classroom or in the real world. Uh, the first one on the general tab is probably the one that gets used most frequently and that's the collect email address option. You can see I have it selected here. Uh, what this will do is add a question to the top of your form that requires someone to enter their email address. Um, that's handy. You don't have to create the question. It's automatically set up so that it only uh, accepts email addresses. Somebody can't just type random things in there um, and submit the form. Sometimes I get frustrated by doing this automatically because it does end up being the very first thing in your form. You aren't able to move that question further down. So you can accomplish the same thing by just adding a question that says email address. Um, so it's up to you, it just depends on if you'd rather add the question manually or use this one. You do get the option uh, when you collect email address through the settings to send a response receipt to your recipient. Um, and you can see the options there. So they'll automatically get a summary of how they have answered the questions on your form or survey. Again, the benefit of it of this is that it happens automatically. You don't have to do anything. Unfortunately, you don't have a lot of um, customization options. You can't customize what that email looks like. You can't add anything to it. Later on in the course, we're going to be looking at some add-ons that will allow you to do this, but also format and create your own um, response summary. So you can decide if you want to do this automated way or create your own. <clears throat> Um, another thing that's pretty popular is uh, the require sign-in option. This is different than email. So for email address, someone could submit an AOL, a Hotmail, an MSN email, where if we say require sign-in, it's going to require a Google login. Now this is helpful if you know that all the people filling out your form will have Google accounts. If you're sending this to parents or an external community, this could actually prevent people from completing your form. Most of the time this option here is used when a teacher is giving a quiz and they want to make sure that students are signing in with their school account, that someone else from outside the school is taking that. It's also used for you know staff evaluations, mock elections, things like that, where it's an internal uh, survey. So that's uh, what you would use that for, and then you can also limit to one response. Again, that is commonly used for quizzes. Now, one of the challenges with checking these boxes is that, um, especially with the limit to one response option, if the person is not currently signed into their Google account, when they click the link or try to access your form, the first thing they're going to see is the Google sign-in screen. That's not a great experience. It doesn't really explain why they have to sign in. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Now, if you're giving a quiz, your students are signed into Chromebooks, for example. When they click that link, they're already signed in, and so they'll go right to the form, and it will collect their email address. Um, down below, you've got a couple of options for what happens after someone has uh, submits their form. You can um, allow them to edit their submission after um, they've submitted it. So what happens when they click submit, there's a unique link to that person's um, actual submissions. If they close that tab, that link will be lost. They won't be able to go back and edit their submission in the future. Now, there are some things that you can do uh, to send that link to the person via email so that they can re-access that in the future. We'll talk about that in a uh, future lesson. Um, and then finally, the summary of charts. Um, that's going to be very similar to what you see in the form summary. We looked at that in the introduction uh, unit. Um, they can see that information as well. That's helpful if you're doing um, some kind of a survey or evaluation. You want to give immediate visibility to um, what other people have selected. So those are the different options on the general tab. 
Um, the presentation tab is pretty simple, not too much here. Um, so first off, we have the progress bar. This is really only useful if you have different sections in your form. We're going to talk about sections later um, in unit one. Um, so it's like biographical information, then you click next, and now you're 25% done, and then you enter your um, mailing address, and you click next, and you're 50% done. Um, so I usually don't turn that on unless I have a fairly lengthy form with multiple um, sections. The shuffle question order was designed for quizzes and assessments. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a little frustrating because it shuffles all of the questions in the form, including name, you know, first name, last name, email address, what section are you in, all of those things. You don't have the ability to pin a question in place. So if you use the shuffle question order, just be aware that the student might have to enter their name in the middle of the form and pick their hour at the end of the form. It just, it's, it's random. I don't typically use this option. I instead use the shuffle option order, which we'll talk about um, when we look at the advanced uh, question options. So uh, those are those two options. Now the confirmation message is something that I would encourage you to modify almost every time that you create a new form. Typically this, uh, the default message that says, thank you, your response has been recorded. Anytime you're asking people to fill out a survey, a quiz, uh, something like that, the first concern that they have was, did my submission work? Did it, did it work? Did I do it right, et cetera? Um, and so I encourage you to put a, a custom message here that specifically references the form or the information or whatever the next steps are going to be. So for example, if this is a quiz for your students, you would say, thank you, your grade has, or your, your questions have been received, your answers have been received, uh, you'll receive your grade in the next uh, few days or something to that effect. Um, you can type that in. Um, this is, uh, will expand, you can go as far as you want. Um, you can't do rich text, bold, italic, underline. It does allow you to do URLs, though. Um, so if I type in, you know, a URL, it won't be hyperlinked here. But when I actually uh, view this, that would be a clickable link. Um, so if, uh, for example, you want your students to start the next thing, you can say, please go to classroom.google.com and complete the next assignment or, or something to that effect. So that's the uh, presentation tab. The last one is quizzes. Um, now in week two, we'll specifically spend some time looking at assessment. We'll go through this in more detail. But if you are creating a form that is an actual quiz, you need to designate that by turning that switch on and then working your way through uh, these options, which are pretty self-explanatory, you know, deciding when you want to release the scores, what information your students will be able to see uh, as soon as they submit uh, their quiz. So that's a look at the settings for your form. Again, I encourage you to open up a form, uh, play with these, maybe even go to a form that you have already created and make some adjustments, uh, perhaps change the confirmation message for that form um, to, to customize it further.